So welcome back guys, this is part two of Cisco DNA Center REST API deep dive video and uh, we'll just basically move on from the last point we finished and it was this function which retrieves the device list from DNA Center sandbox. Uh, and this was just my result. As you can see, I have a list of devices and I retrieve their ID and I store them in a single list. Okay, so if we need to fetch one of these IDs in our subsequent API calls, I will basically grab it uh, by calling this function again. Perfect. Let's, uh, I will open up my documentation again, my API documentation, and let's see what else we can do here with devices uh, section. Okay, so let's see what is this, get threat types. Intent API to fetch all threat types defined. Let's see if we have this capability in our not so capable DevNet sandbox. I will basically, uh, I will basically, sorry, copy this and paste this again and well and i will change the function name again right i'm going to call this function of course um, anything else uh, so to get the threat types i have to send an api request to this endpoint which is basically security threats type security threats type uh, i have to get it right here security threats type okay perfect um we will not need to send any filter as far as I'm concerned, but can we actually send filter? I don't see any queries here. Oh yes, we don't have queries, so we can delete this filter variable from here, therefore from here also. Perfect. And um, anything else? Yeah, I don't need this part also. Let me put threats and return threats. Okay, that looks like it's fine and let me run this script from my terminal to get a better output view b api not found with technical name okay and rest me to get it didn't find the api maybe there's a syntax error so dna intent api v1 dna intent api v1 security threats type security threats type. everything is correct but it seems like devnet sandbox is not so capable so for that reason let's try anything else Okay, so basically let's, let's actually delete this in case, because if we don't, if we can't send a request at all, what's the point, right? Wait, let me see what we have. So let's forget about the threats. It looks like uh, it doesn't allow to MAC address. It's also something with regarding security. So okay, let's just forget about the security endpoint in general, because it seems like I don't have. But this looks good. This request looks very good. Get chassis details for device. We can fetch some important data from this API request. So let me create a function for this, right? Uh, actually, I will just change this directly. So, copy, paste here, and also here, because we're going to call it. And uh, network device, device ID, chassis. Okay, perfect. Network device, network. I have to write it manually, so I'm getting used to memorizing API endpoints. Network device, device ID, and chassis. So, device ID and chassis right so device id is basically get device let's change this list to id because technically we're getting id right let say id okay cool and which id exactly we're getting let's say the first one let's assume and let me fill this device id variable with necessary information uh and here we have to indicate chassis return chassis right that looks fine i guess yeah it should work i'm gonna save it and run the script uh we don't need any criteria for now we're filtering okay and yeah it works we get the response and the response contains details about the chassis um precisely we have hardware version we have um, description, Catalyst 9K UADP 8 port virtual switch. That's a switch we're interacting with. Instance UID, is, is field replaceable? True, the field is replaceable, whatever field that is. Uh, reporting alarms allowed, unknown, unknown. Uh, manufacturer empty, name, switch one. This is the device name, part number, C9KV, blah, blah, blah. Serial number, there you go. And vendor equipment type, whatever that might be. Okay, some useful information out there. Uh, let's keep this 
and we can also filter by device ID, right? Um, okay, we don't need because we just basically search based on that. So, ah, that's, that's not a filter. That's yeah, that's a pass. That's part of pass. It's not like parameter. Is there required parameters? No, there is not. Okay, this looks good. Yeah, so basically, if we want to fetch chassis information about hardware precisely, we indicate device ID in network device section, and we uh, indicate chassis at the end of the URI endpoint. Okay. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, okay, let me try this request, sync devices. It looks very interesting. I don't know if I can do it because uh, in the previous video, I have explored that I do not have enough privileges to execute put request, but maybe synchronization of devices is not a big deal. So perhaps we could try this out and let's construct the script, I guess. Let me just copy this again, right? Paste it over here sync devices not a big deal i hope okay uh do we need device id for this we don't for this particular matter we don't uh the request will be a uh, just network device nothing extraordinary it's like yeah it will sync all devices that's why we don't indicate anything specific anything than that let's say um just sync but we don't need to get this, I think, because per technically we're just sending a put request. Let's just change it. And we will need payload. So let me indicate data is payload, right? And payload will be our new variable, which stores request body, basically, which I will copy from here. Uh, what? Compute device, whatever does it mean, I don't know, but let's just see what's going to happen, I guess. Uh, everything looks good. I am going to print the status code just to see what is going on. Response status code. Perfect. Uh, yeah, please return sync if you can. But uh, anything than that, uh, it looks pretty good. I don't need F also here because I'm not inserting any variable within the API request URL. And everything looks ready. Let me try this. Put request. Oh, I don't have valid permissions yet again. This is actually sad, but okay. Okay. It is what it is. That's kind of sad, but, but in case if you want to sync devices, that's how you do it, right? And if you want to sync a specific device, probably, so synchronizes the devices. If force sync param is false, then the sync would run in normal priority thread. If force sync parameter is true, there's a parameter, okay, uh, then sync would run in high priority thread if available, else the sync will fail. Result can be seen in the child task of each device. Okay. Force sync query parameter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Get wine card details, device interface count, get interface details by device ID and interface name, get device count, get OSBF interfaces, get ISIS interfaces. Wow. I don't know if we have all these protocols enabled on this insufficient lab, but get device config by ID. Device config. Are we talking about like running configuration? Because this might be very interesting. Get device config for all devices. Whatever does it mean? Let's see. Because Returns the config for all devices. Okay, 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 this is interesting. The running configuration. This sounds very, very interesting. Let's try this out. Let's actually try this out. This sounds like interesting request to make. I'm going to do the same. Copy the operation ID, paste as a function name, and repeat the same here to call the function. Okay, and it will be basically network device slash config. Nothing really special. So let me insert this config. We don't need to put this at all. We don't need this one also. And let's say config, return config. That looks pretty decent and it looks ready. So let me run this script. <coughs> Sorry for that. Wow, okay, it looks like I have tons of output here. Yeah, this is legit. This is output guys. This is actual output from devices. 
Wow, look at this. Yeah, there's a lot of output. This is device ID, right? Okay, so what if I run another command, or what kind of filters we have here? Quite a parameters, we don't. But in this one we have, because we insert it right here. Okay, let me do just that. Let me do just that, right? I have to get this. And... Okay, let's see. Um, let's see if we'll get shorter configuration. I don't have any criteria. Um, I have, sorry, sorry, but I have... No, that's right. But why it asks... Because of device ID, right? Okay, yeah, because of device ID. Okay, it makes sense. Okay, but in any case, this config is not short also. No, it's shorter. Yeah, it's definitely shorter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the version 17.9, hostname switch one, ERF definition management, address family. Okay, very, very interesting. This is a very good function. Like, it will give me a configuration. It's pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Okay. Uh, what else we have here? Config get interface by ID. Returns devices added to DNA Center with SNMP version 3 des. That sounds like a very unuseful thing, but perhaps someone genuinely needs that. Get modules. Which kind of modules are we talking about? What do you mean by modules? What is this devices? Intent API for being an assurance device object for generating reports, creating dashboards, or creating additional value added services. Okay, interesting. There's a lot of interesting things and get device enrichment details. What is this? Enrich is a given network device context, device ID or device MAC address or device management IP address with details about the device and neighbor topology. Wow, uh, there was a lot of things here, man. There was a lot of things here. I don't know what to try. Okay, let's try one more uh, API call under devices category and then let's move on to another ones because we have some other decent APIs we should try. Get, get module count, I don't know, functional capability, interface by IP, by pagination range, organization list, device config count, get modules, wireless WAN controller details, but we don't have wireless WAN controller as far as I'm concerned. So maybe something else. We could add new device. That's a great request to make. Let me check the request body. Okay, you are not getting many request body here though. Like you, that would be great to have, but essentially it's something like this. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. We could delete device by specifying a network ID, you know. A device ID, sorry, not network ID. Okay, uh, we got the VLANs. What is this? Inventory inside device link mismatch API. Find all devices with a link mismatch, speed and VLAN. That's very interesting, but I don't think we have this kind of device. Get stack details for device stack. What do you mean by stack? What is stack? Example body. Okay, let's let's actually try this out. I don't know what exactly does it mean, but let's actually try this out. Uh huh. Get stack details for device. Okay, paste it. What else? And that for device device ID stack. I will change this to stack and everything else will remain the same. And let's change this to stack. Okay, that looks like it's ready. Uh, let me clear my screen. Nothing, please. Okay, we've got the device ID, stack port info noun, the platform ID, the MAC address. Yeah, we can get the MAC address. We can get the serial number, software image, and the role, which is active. Okay, interesting. Okay, I think it's enough with devices section. As you can see, it's pretty much the same. Uh, hey, we, we could try a lot of things, but most of them are basically unavailable because Sandbox is very limited in terms of functionality and capability. And unfortunately, again, we cannot try put and post requests because basically our user is not authorized. It sucks a little bit, but it is what it is. Okay, uh, maybe in next videos I will find, I should reserve a regular lab on Sandbox and hopefully that lab will have more capabilities and features to work with. Okay, then we have this clients and there are just four API calls that we can make and all of them are get requests. 
So let's try it. Let's start with get overall client health, I guess, yeah. So uh, I'm going to basically create a new function. We have a lot of functions here. Normally we should not have too many functions under what source code, uh, but it's just an example. So in production environment, it would be great to have multiple files per each category of APIs. That would make much more sense. And then you could import these Python files to other Python files and when you need them, you know. Okay, so DNA a intent v1 client health basically. I'm deleting everything from this point onwards and I'm saying client dash health. Let's make it also client underscore health. It looks like it's ready. I don't need this also. And this one also I don't need at all. Okay, it looks pretty good. Let me save it and let me run the script. I don't, okay, if there's something wrong with the script, wait. I have to see what's going on. Yeah, I didn't call my function. I saved it and now it should work. Okay, seems like I have a lot of output. Mm, okay, so yeah, okay, there's a lot of information here. Let me see response client count to uh, maintenance affected client count. Okay, interesting. So this is the health of clients. Wired clients. So we have wireless and wired clients. This client is part of software defined access architecture. Anything else that is that could be extracted for uh, operational purposes, maybe. I'm just trying to find something that could be useful, but, well, maybe score value, right? Minus one, but I don't know what minus one stands for. Is there information about that? Returns overall client health information by client type, wired and wireless, or any given point of time. So we have timestamp query, and that's pretty much it. Okay, well, Okay, so what else? Client proximity. This intent API will provide client proximity information for a specific wireless user. Proximity is defined as presence on the same floor at the same time. Proximity is defined as presence on the same floor at the same time as the specified wireless user. The proximity workflow requires a subscription to the following event via the event notification workflow prior to making this API call. So I have to subscribe to this event, to this event, right, before making an API call. Okay, so this is something that we cannot do now. Get client detail. The, the only difference of this is we add detail here and it returns detailed client information retrieved by MAC address for any given point of time. Okay, um, get client enrichment details. Enrich is a given network end user context, a network user ID or end user's device MAC address with details about the user, the devices that the user is connected and the assurance issues that the issuer is, user is impacted by. Let's try this API. I don't know what it will do exactly, but let me just basically create a separate function for it. Get client enrichment details. I still don't understand what enrichment necessarily means. It sounds a little bit weird, enrichment. Uh, so let me actually send a request and see what's going on. A client enrichment details. Let me type it in. Enrichment dash details. Okay, look, it looks like it's done now. Uh, let me call it uh, client enrich, just to keep it short. Okay, and let me save it, right? And let me run it. Invalid entity type. Entity type must be either be MAC address or network user ID. Entity type? You mean I have to put parameter or what? I have to put a header. Okay, this is interesting. Entity value and client enrichment details can be fetched based on either user ID or client MAC address. Okay, user ID or MAC address. Parameter value must be either network user ID or MAC address. Network user ID. Um, okay, entity value contains the actual value for the entity type that has been defined. Uh, I would love to see an example of this. But from what I understood, I have to add a new header here and say, uh, what was that? entity type, right? Let me copy this. Okay, come here. So it's probably MAC address, right? 
Mm -hmm. So let me fetch MAC address actually. Uh, where can I find it though? MAC address. I think I could get it from the stack. Yeah, the stack definitely had MAC address. I remember that. Okay, let me uh, for now basically put this in quotation marks, inside quotation marks, because I want to dynamically fetch MAC address and I will fetch it using to get stack details for device uh, API. I will call this again. I will save it up. Let me see. No, I don't need anything else here, please. Okay, there you go. How do I, okay, response. Okay, stack switch info. And within that, we will have MAC address. Let me try to actually type it in. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna be stack response, right? Stack switch info zero and MAC address. Okay, let's see if we can fetch it now. Perfect, we have the MAC address, that's amazing. And this will basically get the MAC address now, not the stack. I can change the name of this function to get MAC address. Oh, it's okay. Get MAC address. That makes more sense. And client enrichment details. MAC address will be get MAC address. Very very simple, and it will be added here. Okay, so now I have MAC address, but it's not enough because I have another required header that I have to put entity value and it will contain the actual value for the entity type that has been defined. I don't understand what exactly does this mean. Enrich is a given for user and user context uh, address with details about the user, the devices that the user is connected to and the assurance. Uh, I don't know what I have to put there though. Uh, there is not enough information about this here. There's absolutely not enough information. Oh, okay, um, well, let's try to run like this. So let me see what's going to happen. Empty type must be either MAC address or network user ID. Well, it is MAC address. It looks like, yeah, it, it definitely misses something. Like we have to put obviously entity um, value, but it's just, I don't know where to put it. Well, I have to put something here, but I don't know why. I genuinely don't know what I have to put here. Either user ID, right? Or client MAC address. I have decided to put the MAC address there. This parameter value must either be, okay, I, I already did this. I have already completed this step. And this step also demands me to put in string but it contains the actual value for the entity type that has been defined. Actual value? What do you mean by actual value? Whatever does it mean? The client made a request that the server could not understand. The client's authentication credentials included with the request are missing or invalid. The client made a request for a resource that does not exist. The server could not fulfill the request. Listen, I just don't know how to put the headers here. It would be great if you gave me a hint Maybe I could Google it. I just don't know what else I can do. get client enrichment details. So I'm gonna paste it and say um, entity value. Uh, was that right, entity value? Yeah, underline. There's a GitHub which consists of a function. Maybe here you have networks. Ah, okay, okay, that's very stupid what I did here. That is very stupid. Okay, so type I have to, it's like a metadata. It's like a, so type is a metadata for MAC address, right? Let me get rid of that. 
and this is the actual MAC address. That was the problem here. Now, we, now it should work. Now it should work. I don't specify any parameter. NT must be okay. This is getting stupid because I did it. It it, it should work. It definitely should work, but for some reason it doesn't. Uh, okay, let me try to manually insert. Actually, maybe yeah, maybe it just doesn't understand dynamically. In that case, I can troubleshoot, but I'm gonna input it manually, so you better work, right? You better work. No, this is okay. There's something wrong with that request, but essentially it is what it is. This is how it should work. Yeah, okay. Maybe it's just DNA center being incapable again. Okay, uh, let's give us a little break. Okay guys, we're back again and uh, let's see where we paused our video. So enrichment API, okay, okay. Uh, let's keep going. That was the client section and now let's see the users. Again, enrichment, again, the same thing. Uh, I don't know why I couldn't do it last time. Maybe I will not be able to do it again, but let's try with, let's try again, let's try again. Maybe this time it will work. All I have to do is basically change a few things, user enrichment. So I'm gonna change this to user and here also user, right? This capital U. Uh, okay, everything looks good. I don't know why it doesn't work though. The MAC address also looks good. Can you print the MAC address? Maybe I could. MAC address. Maybe I could monitor if it's if it's alright. Uh, well, maybe it is because I have to put this inside the string. Maybe I don't know. Let me try. Let me try. Uh, I'm trying it. So, anything else? Yeah. The client to user, probably. Yes. Okay, everything else looks fine. And it should work, I guess. And yeah, let's change also this part. For. Okay, let's run the script. I don't have any parameters. I fetched a MAC address. Oh, entity type must be either a MAC address. Entity type. So you don't like this part. I don't understand. I'm I'm doing just that. I don't know why you are. It's the same thing. It's it's literally the same thing. It has to work. It just has to work. And maybe we don't even have to put it right this. Of course we don't have to. Look at this. Talking works, so it should work also. String is string anyway. Oh no, it doesn't work because of other things. But maybe it's a wrong MAC address. The MAC address is valid. It's just entity type. Invalid entity type. I don't understand that. I don't understand this seriously. That's what I put, MAC address. That's crazy, it's kind of crazy. Well, maybe, should it? Wait, it, it can be maybe before. Okay, let's put it before. I don't think it. this is the reason, but you know, everything can happen, so let me just try this. No, that's not the that's not the reason. There is something wrong with this call, essentially. Uh, but in general, it look it has to be like this. It just has to be. There is nothing else I could do about this. Okay, let's keep going. That was users issues. We also have issue enrichment. <laughs> whatever does it mean? Uh, okay, let's try this issues API. Intent API to get a list of global issues. Issues for a specific device or issue for a specific client device's MAC address. And we are specifying these uh, elements by query parameters. So start time, end time, site ID, device ID, MAC address, priority, AI driven, issue status. A lot of interesting things, I guess. Okay, let me basically try this. Uh, operation ID issues, very simple ID. What else here? DNA intent API v1 issues. 
lowercase. Yes, thanks. Um, okay, issues, issues. Okay, let's run the script. Okay, we got the list of issues. Again, everything is wrapped up in response key. And there we go, we have uh, device ID here, we have issue ID, uh, we have uh, status active, excessive time lag between Cisco DNA Center and device switch 3, that's the name of the issue. Excessive time lag between DNA Center and device switch 4, switch 2, basically we have excessive time lag between all of the devices, between DNA Center and other devices, right? That's pretty much it, okay. API v1 issues, okay, this is going to be the same, right? Okay, but maybe, okay, can you see, we have issue ID here, so let's try with issue ID. It's going to be a little bit different now because I'm not using any MAC address, but I have to fetch issue ID, so let me make it, turn it to new request, which will basically return the issue ID, right? And, uh, actually, issue ID maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. Get issue enrichment details. Okay, and this is going to be issue ID, right? And here we indicate this. Okay, that looks like everything is fine here. But first we have to get the issue ID, right? And it's going to be in response zero and uh, there is a list but let's assume we don't have a list let's just take the first one yeah the first one so it will return response zero and uh, basic uh, no. basically issue id right okay then you will put this issue id here mm -hmm. And that should be enough to send a request to the enrichment. Get issue enrichment details. Okay, let's try it out. Entity type must be either MAC address or network user ID. This is, okay, this is the proof that there is something essentially wrong with the enrichment APIs in DNA sandbox because it tells me that entity type must be either MAC address or network user ID, but in the official API documentation for get issue enrichment details API call, we can definitely see that uh, enriches a given network issue context and issue ID or end user's MAC address with details about the issues, impacted hosts, and suggest actions for mediation. Issue enrichment details can be fetched based on either issue ID or MAC address. That's it, issue ID or MAC address. I have used issue ID, and it works pretty good. I can I can prove that we can get the issue, issue ID. I will call this function and I will get an issue ID. Just check this out. I'm pretty sure it works. Yeah, there you go. That's my issue ID. And then it takes this value and pastes it here to the header. And despite that, I still get a stupid error specifying that I have to put user ID or MAC address, but it's bullshit because it has to work. Simple as that. Okay, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Sandbox has a lot of limitations, especially if it's always on. So that's why if you want to dive deeper, uh, you have to reserve a regular sandbox, not always on. So next time it will be a great lesson to me. Okay, let's see the site design. There's a lot of APIs, but again, we cannot use most of them, unfortunately. Uh, so let's at least try to use get NFV profile by ID, whatever ID, ID of network profile. But I don't have network profile ID. Where do I find it? Get device details by IP. By IP, what do you mean? So I can, okay. So let me try this. I don't know if it's gonna work. Okay, so get the rest details by IP. Okay. I have a lot of requests now in the same format, but it's fine. DNA intent API one business and a fee provisioning detail. Let me actually type this in. Business and a fee provision provisioning 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 business and if it provisioning detail it's a get request right there device details get this out 
Uh, okay, the API URL looks good, function is called, uh, output has been stored and returned. Let's run this and see what's gonna happen. Invoid device IP. So, are you telling me that we, ah, we have to put it in body of the request, device IP. Do I have a device IP somewhere? I have no clue if I have, I, maybe I will have to get another Okay, uh, maybe get device, device, no, get device config, mm, I'm not sure if it's gonna work, get device ID maybe, this could work, but it fetches just the ID, maybe I should create a new, um, yeah, let me create a new function which will fetch IP addresses of devices, so get device IP, right? I think it should be uh, right here, but I just don't remember what kind of output we got. So let me basically comment this for one second and return devices, right? Get device IP and uh, I don't need filter here, I guess. No, thank you. Uh, everything else looks just fine. Let me just call this function, please. Okay. Management IP address. Okay, perfect. I got it. So now we can. Where was that? Get chassis details. Get device. Yeah, there we go. It's here. So I'm going to uncomment this, delete this, and put this here. IP list. Yeah. Because that's what we're getting for IP in. IP list, no, in devices. Okay, let's see if it's gonna work, if it's gonna work. Get device IP. It should fetch the list of all IP addresses and it does work pretty good. Now take one of these IP addresses and add it to body, right? Okay, let's create the payload variable, which will basically store this payload that we apparently need. And let me put, this is not my style, I love single quotation marks. Uh, okay, so let me put, I can't directly, I think I can directly put like IP here, right? I mean, I, I could do it. And I can say IP is basically get uh, device IP, right? Let's say the first one, and this is the IP. And let's add this to data parameter here. Payload, no, not password, payload. Okay. Uh, let's see if it's gonna work now. No, I have to call the function. Get device details by IP. So since I have IP now, um, what's going on? Sorry for that. Okay. Yeah, since I have the IP address, it should work. Invoid device IP trigger require params to SAP entered inquire parameter. Uh, this is weird because I didn't enter anything. I don't know what's what it, 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 it talks about, but it's, okay, is that a body or no? Like why it's so difficult to, uh, let me actually try this without body, right? Question mark. And uh, how, do, how do you write that again? Device IP, let me, let me, take this device IP is basically IP and fill this let's try it again now I have quite a parameter indicated okay not able to retrieve the provisioning details all this fuss just to just to came up with conclusion that current sandbox is un, unavailable for cannot basically work with this resource network settings the next category is network settings. Uh, okay, we have a different structure. We have a different design now. It looks like it's not as, yeah, they don't have templates on the right pane, pane right hand side, or no, they have, it's just, okay, it was welding. Uh, I can't create, sorry, I can't update, I can't delete, uh, device credential details, whatever does it mean. Device credential, I have to get device credential details. Okay, let's try that. I'm not sure if it's gonna work because 
maybe credential details need specific role to view it but uh, you never know you never know i guess so let me do this get device credential details i'm gonna paste it here and here device creds let's say creds creds right v1 device credential do it everything the device dash credential save it check it device credential all right uh, this is also we don't need this one and let's try to print this out okay it looks like it works but there is no device credential details present in the system so yeah but if we had credentials we would get all of them like coi http snmp all of them that's pretty good request actually like if you need some credentials uh fetch to you yeah that's pretty interesting so i'm gonna keep this function very interesting let's see another one get global pool api to get global pool what do you mean by global pool use ip address count and what about get network what it does return okay i think get global pool makes more sense so let me just get global pool i guess um, okay okay device pool or let's say global pool right okay uh and api is going to be global pool very straightforward actually and simple global pool well it looks like it's ready yeah i don't see anything else that i should specify uh let's see there is no global ip pools present in the system for the given input okay yeah as you can see there's not much things okay i i encourage myself to not waste my time with api calls that are basically unavailable due to insufficiency of devnet sandbox and let me try some important ones indicated in at least uh, ccmp and out exam so as you can see this is the dna center domain and these are the questions this is basically the official blueprint of questions that i or you can encounter while taking this particular exam and in dna center domain we have some pretty interesting apis that are you know at least useful for the exam so we worked with a lot of intent apis that's what that's basically what we're doing since the beginning of this video and uh, the site apis we explored most of them uh pretty much all of them actually yeah uh let's device apis we did all of them almost important ones so we are left with command runner apis network discovery apis and template apis okay command runner right network discovery and template apis let's see what we have we have configuration templates that's probably it right gets the templates available okay get me the template available this looks good this looks like a good api to work with at least for ccmp and auto examination so i will do the same steps here to create a new function template programmer template okay let me do it template dash programmer slash template we don't need this request url looks fine let's say templates templates right and return templates Delete this l here Control s and call the function okay we have some output here yeah we have a long output actually it's very long so it starts here composite false device types product family product series name dmvp and hub for cloud router system default so this is the vpn template right if we want to deploy this uh, configuration we have to run this template so from the blueprint we had apply a template i certainly don't have privileges to do this operation but at least i will find this url api call and i will apply a template so probably it is somewhere here and version imports create template no this is something different this is to create a new template from scratch that's not what we need we need to apply the template how do we apply it create a project which project a template project deploy template yeah there you go this is it this is it guys this yeah that's what we exactly 
that's exactly what we need but hear me out since we have template we probably have their ids yeah we do let's basically fetch template ids so that we can work with them right okay so and there's also project id might be interesting might be interesting i'm gonna basically uh do the list method here also when last time i did the list method um yeah here so let me take this don't return templates make a list of templates template list for template in templates Okay, so it will be probably uh, it's a list, right? So maybe actually let's let's try to access the uh, actual return templates, right? Templates, what we have here, templates inside templates, we have composite false. So there's a list. Okay, what if I directly indicate template ID? Because it looks like it's within the list, but maybe it opens up a list directly. So let me try. Okay, it looks like I have to indicate that. Let me retry. Yeah, perfect. So that's what I have to do now. Let me just copy this part and paste it right here and uncomment this and delete this part. Perfect. It will return the list of all template by their IDs. I forgot something very important. Let's see what I forgot. We don't have something called response, right? So technically we don't need this. And we can actually make it like that, I think, because technically it's a list, right? So maybe this makes sense. Uh, okay, it looks like it didn't work, but this one should work at least. There's something wrong. Append, why you cannot append that? No, I'm pretty sure this is this is all right. It's all right. Everything is pretty much the same. We don't change much things here. I don't know why. You basically have to append an element to the list. Unless uh, maybe it's a different list. That's why. Could it be though? Well, there's one list, and the template ID is here. Um, okay, this is getting a little bit uh, exhausting, but return templates, right? That's what I said. What if I say one? I think it's a little bit different. Ah, okay. Yeah, I understand what's going on. Yes, we have multiple lists here, so... Mm -hmm. this, is a little bit, this is a little bit different okay uh, we have to put another four so there must be another four up here okay so for i in templates This has to be here. Okay. Append I. There you go. Now this should work. Uh, sorry. Do I need this now? Technically, we don't need this. So, okay, I'm a little bit confused what I did now. Templates. Okay, yeah, it, sh it should work. Okay, okay, I'm, wait, 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 I'm doing something wrong here. For E, in the length of templates maybe, yeah? Uh, 
Ugh. Let's not eat turbo. The problem is that there is multiple lists within the list. And we have to loop through each element of the list. Right? There's, there's, there's multiple lists. And each list can, contains template ID. So if we want to loop through the list, shouldn't we basically say... Uh, Um, well, 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 let me think. Okay, I, I messed this up. Give me, give me some break. Maybe I should do it uh, again. So return templates zero, for example, uh, or one, right? And if I put the template ID, it returns me exact template ID, but I have to do it in loop, right? Okay, okay, got it. So this is my ID, right? My template ID is this. Okay, now I have to, okay. So I want a template list that, per, that makes perfect sense to have a list, which is empty in the beginning, right? And then we'll fill it with template IDs, but we have to loop through each of them to find it. And to loop, we must change this value, right? It has to be zero first, then one, then two. But the problem is, in the beginning, it should be zero. Maybe that's what I'm not doing, right? So it has to be zero, but then obviously, things change a little bit okay just get rid of that so if it's if it's zero it's gonna be template is append Yeah, that, that should work. This should actually work. This makes sense. But until... Okay, yeah, that works. Yeah, perfect. This is what I... Yeah, basically, yeah, this is what I had to do. I had to uh, loop through this number, not uh, something within that. So that's why I had to a little bit modify my list uh, here. So yeah, let me wrap this up. Yeah, we have a template list now, which consists of all template IDs. Perfect. And yeah get template ID, let's change it to get template ID, right? Okay, perfect. And now we have it, let's sort of deploy that. Okay, to deploy it, and we don't really need this much stuff, but I was just making it ready in case if we need it in other API calls right here, we'll see. Everything just starts, that's a post request. I will not be able to accomplish that, but at least let me construct the API so that I feel that I did this, I applied the template. Okay, perfect. So let me come here and change its name. Deploy template. Deploy, deploy. It's gonna be a post request. Let me change the HTTP verb. And obviously template dash programmer template deploy. We're adding a deploy in the endpoint URI. So obviously we will need a payload because it's a post request. And uh, we have to indicate it here, data payload, right? Perfect. So type manage device IP. Uh, is that how we do it? Example body. Force push template true. Host name ID. Version template ID. Member temp. Okay, there's a lot of information here. But essentially, it should work. I'm just gonna copy this and paste here in case in future, maybe one day when I have access. So. I could do it. Uh, what's wrong with that? Maybe I have to do it like this, right? Yeah. This uppercase because Python doesn't recognize lowercase in Boolean values of true and false. Uh, yes, that's pretty much it. It should work. It should. It could work actually. But let me print the response status code and uh, deploy. If I can return deploy, it would be great. But whatever. Uh, let's try to run this. I know it's not going to work, but let me actually try. Maybe there is exceptions, but whatever. Yeah, rule doesn't have. Okay, perfect. But yeah, in case you want to deploy or apply, let's say, a template, a ready configuration template to some device, what you should do is, there you go. In payload, you can uh, indicate these strings with necessary values, right? To which device you want to 
add it, right? What's the host name of that target device? What's the ID of that target device? I guess, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's how you do it. Deploy. So, yeah, this question is deployment. Because there's nothing when it comes to update. Update is just change the state of template, right? So replace something or update some information in an already existing object. Delete the template, delete the template. Very simple, very, very simple. There's nothing really, really crazy about this calls here. Uh, gets a list of projects, whatever projects do, I don't know. So projects, I think templates are categorized under projects. Status of template, this is also very interesting. So this is what we use to track the deployment status, and this is very useful. For example, when you want to deploy already existing template configuration, and when when you apply the, uh, the, the configuration template, when you deploy it, it needs some time to, to be complete. And to track the status of deployment, you can you can use this API, you can call this API periodically within a short time frame to, to see what's going on behind the scenes in your terminal. So this is interesting. Uh, I don't know, I will create, I will create because it's not so difficult to create. And this might be a very, very useful thing. Uh, actually, I don't even need this. Uh, okay, so all we have to do here is change some things. Template deploy status, uh, template programmer, template deploy status, deploy status and we add the ID of deployment, right? Deployment ID. I've worked with this on my Cisco FMC automation project. I remember that I was tracking the status uh, just to make sure the deployment is successful, whether it's it's still on, it's still going on. You know, it's it's important thing, right? And let me put it right this. And yeah, deployment ID, right? Deployment ID. We have already a function which does it for us. Get deploy, get template ID, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, template ID or deployment ID? I think I'm doing something wrong. Yes, because we should not get, we should put the deployment ID, not the template ID. So how do I get the list of deployments though? That's another question. So probably we don't get, it's just when we apply, when we deploy something, we're getting an ID as a result, right? Yeah, there you go, deployment ID. So yeah, this is the value we need, but we don't have it here. Okay, status of template. Deployment, that's what we're doing now. Get all versions of a given template. Uh, okay, since it's impossible, maybe I should not do it, but yeah, in case, that's how you do it basically, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna delete this. I don't need this no more. Okay, so yeah, interesting. So we have explored the configuration templates pretty much from what we could, right, from what Sandbox allows us to do. Uh, let's keep going again. What else we have? We have Discovery and s Command Runner. Okay, let's see if we have it. Um, command Runner, there we go, and Discovery. Okay, let's start with Command Runner. Uh, there are just two APIs. This one I can't do, obviously, but this one, yeah. So, Operation ID, get all keywords of CLS accepted by Command Runner. I'm gonna just say get keywords, man. This is too much. This is crazy, this is too much. I'm just going to say, uh, get keyword, all keywords, get CLI keyword, maybe, yeah? Get CLI keyword, okay, uh, not so long. So DNA intent API v1 network device polar slash CLI slash widget reds Network device polar, interesting, network dash device dash polar, what else? CLI slash widget dash reads. This is our endpoint. Okay, get it out keywords. Mm -hmm. uh, so probably, let's say keywords, right? And return keywords. It looks like it's ready. So let's clean the screen and run it. Okay, yeah, I have some commands here, I guess. And I uh, show commands maybe, test commands, the ping probably. So these are the CLI keywords that we could use as a part of command runner API. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, since I have this list, I can fetch anything from this list, right? I can basically, uh, I can basically fetch anything. 
Okay. So my question would be, how do I use it? Run read-only commands on devices to get the real-time configuration. Can we do it? I think we can do it. I'm not sure. I, I, I think it's not so big of a deal because it's read-only command. Let's try this out. This is very interesting. So this is too long again. Basically, in the run commands, yeah. That makes more sense to type it in. So uh, run commands. Mm, run commands. Let's copy that. Let's paste it over here. Okay, so commands, probably. Return commands, print the status code. Response, status code, okay, nice. And we will have a payload variable, which will contain a example body. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to copy this, but for some reason, whatever, Okay, so uh, let's let's say the show command, right? Show show version, right? Very simple command. Description uh, uh, get device OS version device UIDs. Well, we can get this from a string. It has to be a string, right? Oh, technically, uh, we can make like this device ID is get device ID, right? For example, uh, this one, and put this here, I guess. Yeah. Name. Name of what? Like, do we have actually some information about how do we do it? Unfortunately, they don't enough. They don't provide enough information about that, which is very important, actually. Which is kind of important. Then for device uh, CLI read request, we have to change this part. CLI, not legit reads, but read request. And this is going to be a post request. And let's put the payload inside the parameter. Not password, but payload. Okay, so it looks like. A name, uh, name of what? Like, name of a device? What is this name here? I really don't like this because they don't provide enough information about the request body. For, like, what do you mean by name? Which name? Name of what? Is that a name of device or what? Submit request for read on with COIs. Request body content type. The request was successful. The result is containing a response body. The post request was fulfilled. A new resource has been created. Information about this. Blah blah blah. Two one. Okay, I don't need this. Those are response status codes. I don't I know what's gonna happen if that's gonna I have to put header content type application JSON. I already did put it. Definition. Device UID. I can okay, I can put entire list here. Yeah. Can I do it? Like not just this, but you know, like all of them. So this one will return just one of them, right? No, this one with our entire list. That's exactly what I need here. Perfect. Yeah, device list. That's 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 just perfect. But I don't need a list within a list. This is already a list. So this is what I need. Yeah, that's great. That's very good. So the name. What should the name be? String. Name of what? Let's say test maybe? I don't know. Uh does it actually gonna work? I don't know. Let's find it out by running the command. I have to make sure if I, yeah, okay, okay, let's try to run that, oh, uh, now I don't have anything, there was an error processing the input, bad request, bad request, what do you mean bad request, what exactly about this request is bad, I don't know, maybe this part, how do I delete this, I don't need name, let's assume, is it really a necessary argument? Oh, well, it looks like I can do it, but unfortunately, there's always this problem with this request body. There's not, there's simply not enough information. Like, what do you mean by that? What do you actually mean? Unfortunately, there's just not enough information. Okay, I, I've been recording for more than one hour and 20 minutes, so, uh, but yeah, but this is, this is it, guys. Again, this is not very difficult. Uh, we just don't have this, some um, examples to you know, see what's going on. I'm going to print this and I'm going to verify if I have 
if I'm doing everything all right. And actually, give me, you know what, give me a type. It should be a list. It says array, but array and list is technically the same thing, right? It's just different definition. So, no, I don't have it. That's a list. Everything is perfectly valid. I just don't know why it's so annoying. Maybe you cannot run this command, right? But it says bad request. There was no process pressing the input arguments. Input arguments. Which argument? That's that's literally a description. This is a command. How can command be a something that you know you can't understand? Well, as per schema definition, the uh, commands array. The arrays are always problematic. Always problematic. Okay. Maybe I should make it. Uh, no, that's a waste. Okay, I will. I will search for this, guys. But not now, maybe. Or actually, you know what? But let's search for this now because it's 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 very interesting. So, how do I? Basically, command runner DNA center command runner API post. Okay, there's one website. Getting started, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Command runner get list, run command. Okay, perfect. JSON dumps payload. Where is the payload? Commands. Show IP list. Isn't it the same that I have? It's a list. Okay. Well, maybe it's because of this. Okay, that's interesting. Let's try it out. Is that because of JSON? No way. No way it's because of JSON. Let's try. What? Oh, it worked? It actually worked. I think it actually worked. So it was because of JSON? Oh, if it's... No, it's because of JSON. Check task. Uh, there's a, okay, this is a different API we haven't worked with. It's this one. But yeah, for the sake of brevity, maybe uh, I could use this. Okay, guys, basically, uh, let's try to find this task ourselves, I guess. Yeah, we'll explore also new category of API called task. So yeah, I found this API, get task by ID. So we have ID here and we have even the URL. So let's just try to create a new function which does just that. And um, yeah, let me copy this, I guess. It's gonna be the task by ID, right? API will be, well, in this particular case, this is the API, but technically, yeah, technically, we could have some different APIs, yeah, diff different IDs. We could, like, we could put this value dynamically, but that's not so important now. Uh, get tasks, but actually we could do it with this command, right? Technically we can. So let's, let's do this first, actually. Let's not rush. Why I forgot the last part here. This is very important. Let me put this here. So yeah, this, is, this was very important to, to dump the JSON data. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. Okay. Uh, and return, okay, why I'm not doing this until the end, I still don't understand. Let me just copy this also. I will change, I will change, don't worry. I will change everything, but first I want to make everything dynamic and I want to explore a new API, so basically get tasks, right? First we'll get some tasks. And this API is basically DNA intent. Oh, I, I forgot about that part, that's very important. We should not forget about this part. Okay, DNA intent, API task, whatever. Where's task? DNA intent, why? It's a little bit weird. Okay, task, right? Task, mm-hmm. Okay, give me a list of tasks first, then we'll see what's gonna happen, right? And let me call this function. This is very interesting. It's getting interesting and interesting. We can manually find the task of ours, which ends with this value 6e38. So if I say find 6e38, 
Oh, I don't have it in the task list. Why? No way. Oh. That's very, very interesting, but I can't find it. Okay. Let's assume it's dynamic. It's not dynamic, it's static. Let's assume so. Get task by ID. So it's this one, right? Uh, the ID is indicated. Okay. So I send a get request, I think. I think. Task return task. And run this function. Maybe. Yeah, that's right. It's ended at this time. This is the ID for this task. For some reason, we can't see it here. Uh, okay, it wasn't problematic, meaning it was executed properly. I can see that there is some file ID. Okay, root ID. That was command runner service. That's completely right. And that was done by Devnet user, which is my user at the moment for sandbox. That's pretty much all right. So in this uh, website, they say that you have to, what is this? Also, this is API. This API is asynchronous, so we'll get back a response containing task ID and the URL. Well, we we did get this output already. So, why there is so many output? This is oh my god, there is so much output here. Yeah, that's what we got, right? The task ID and the URL and response two o two two o two basically means everything is all right. We have created a new task is going on. Uh, okay, so, okay, let me get this straight. What else we do? We check the result. The tasks API will provide a response with a file ID. So this file ID points to a file containing the output of the command. So we have to get a file which apparently holds the output of show version command. And this file is a different category, which is here, right? What do we have in task else? Task tree, uh, task count, task by operation ID, okay, whatever. Not much. Get the list of files. Download a file by file ID. This makes perfect sense. Let's try to download this. Let me create a new function, which is basically download a file by ID. Let's say uh, download file. Download file. Right. Simple name for a simple function, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, let's make it static because I'm just I'm just checking out what's going on, right? And file ID will be I have it here. This is my file ID. Let me grab this from here. Let's make it dynamic. Yeah, let's make it dynamic actually. So I will have this file ID variable here, file ID, right? And it will be get task by ID. And it will return the task response progress file ID task response progress file ID. I think. Let me see if it's if that's all right. So response right progress file ID. So I have this capital letter. Okay, let me first actually print this if to make sure it works. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, print that. We should get this value. Uh, like always, task response. Maybe I forget about some list or something. Uh, Let's do it one by one. Let's do it like this, actually. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so why you cannot extract this value? Because it's a string, right? For... How do I extract this? Like, what, what is the type of this? Please, can you tell me what is the type of this particular thing? Is that a... What is it? Like, is that a... Dictionary or what's that? That's a string. Uh, so maybe if we, but that's okay. So let's perhaps let, let me let me do this. File 
ID is this, but encode it because it's a string. We have to load it to Python, right? We have to load it, loads, and return file ID, maybe, right? Return file ID, and uh, it will return. Return. So let's make let's make it file. Return file. Return file. Does that make sense? Uh, wait. This looks like it makes perfect sense. I mean, at least this looks like that. Yeah? So let's try again. Just to make everything dynamic. Yeah, perfect. It works. Now fetch it dynamically. Okay, perfect. And put it right here. That's just exactly, this is e exactly what we need. Tasks, by the way, tasks, not task. Or, or no, it's task, it's task, sorry for my... Yeah, we should change it here. So, file. A file. Let's make it progress. And file, return file. Because it should download the file, right? Mm-hmm. And you know what? Just print the response. Sorry, print the response status code so I know what's going on. And call this function. Let's see. I made everything dynamic, so maybe it takes time to download. Oh my God! I think it works. It looks disgusting, but yeah, show version. Yeah, and it, it is long because it's been applied on multiple devices, right? Because I've inserted the list. And there you go. There you go. It works just fine. Let me do it without pretty print. Let me comment this and let me say print, download file. That's crazy. That's dope. That's dope, actually. It's, it's very cool because finally there is a first post request that I have privilege to execute and by changing a simple thing I could now get the uh, I could explore two more API sections in in use and we can actually fetch some information so let me clear this <coughs> and rerun the script uh, without pretty print because I think yes that is what I was saying there you go that's the output of show version command that's very cool but we have to also make it dynamic this part right so how do I know that we can make it dynamic? We are getting it from, yeah. Yeah, there is a way to make it dynamic. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it looks like we completely export command runner. We export task and file APIs, which is very, very cool. And uh, yeah, there's still a lot of APIs here, but most of them are basically unavailable. But the last one based on an auto blueprint will be network discovery. So let's check it real quick. And this article, by the way, was very, uh, this blog by Wim Walters was very, very useful, helpful. So thanks to the uh, the contributor of this particular blog. So it has he has a, a little bit of different approach uh, of doing this, but I guess, yeah, I guess it is what it is. Uh, we're just testing and exploring. So yeah, discovery APIs. There is a lot of discovery APIs. So let's try to get count of all discovery jobs. I don't really care about count. Get network dis devices from discovery. Uh, get discoveries by range. Get discovery by ID. Get credential subtype by credential ID. Get list of discoveries by discovery ID. Wow, Ugh, I, there's a lot of things. I don't know which one to apply. Maybe get discovery. <laughs> which range? I don't have this range here. Is there any simple request that we can make? Record suite or start index by range. What do they mean by range? Range of what? Like IP addresses or what? Returns never device from discovery job based on given photo discovery ID can be obtained using the get discoveries by range API. Get discoveries by range. I, I've seen that. There you go. Let's try this out. Okay. Returns the discovery by specified range. Well, let's try that. Let's actually try that. Mm-hmm. Uh... We can go back to pretty print mode, right? Yeah, let's 
around this also and then finish up for today. I think it's been, uh, yeah, it's it's been in total, it's been around one hour and 45 minutes or something like that. So get discoveries by range, get discoveries by range. What's discovery, start index, records to return. So what's the weight this, discovery? Start index records to return. Start index. <laughs> okay. Start. Yeah, let's actually do it as per API documentation. I will populate these values afterwards for convenience, I guess. Records to return. I will just copy paste that. I will fill that. So it's start index and records to return. Can you tell me how do we do it? Integer, integer start index do we have some range here like what would you mean by start index is that one or zero what is it Ugh, whatever let's make it zero records to return what's 100 maybe i don't know okay so discovery let's say discovery uh, this let's say just, just discovery and return discovery right mm-hmm I think it's fine. I don't know what else I could put here. Well, well, basically, I don't know what's going on. That's why. So let me just, uh, I guess, run this and see what's going on. For real. Invalid start index start index should be equal to or greater than one. Okay. As you wish. Let's make it one. Not a big deal, you know. Okay, there is no discovery, so it doesn't work, apparently, because, yeah, again, uh, we don't have any IDs, so since we don't have any IDs, I don't really understand what could we do, but technically, oh, we can try this API to see if we have something, it returns the count, so I mean, real quick, real quick, create this function, get count of all discovery jobs, not bad name, it's a bit long, but it's descriptive, so we don't need any of this here, right? And the discovery count, very basic endpoint URI count, right? So discovery count, that's what I'm gonna say, perfect. Uh, we don't need this also, it looks like it's ready. So let's see the total amount of discovery jobs, zero. Okay, so we don't have anything. Uh, yeah, I think that's perfectly enough for today, guys. Uh, we have explored, in the second part, we have <coughs> explored, again, some devices API, clients, users, issues. Uh, then we did some um, configuration templates and command runner. We have get the list of uh, possible keywords, possible commands that we could run on our command runner. Uh, DNA center setting. And in that service, uh, we run the shell version command by creating a post request and it returned us a task ID. So we use this task ID to track the status of a task and it returned us the file ID. And by getting the specific file ID uh, using, uh, using this particular download a file by file ID API request, we downloaded the output of shell version command, which we applied on four different devices dynamically in our Python script. And we also, at the end, we looked to discovery. Unfortunately, a Sandbox API, Sandbox uh, platform does not provide a lot of features and we don't really have much to discover because as you saw, we don't even have discovery jobs at all. It's zero. So yeah, we couldn't do much things and it's been a very long video. Uh, so I don't know if I will make a third part. There is still some APIs, but even if I make it, I'm not sure if I will make it with the always on sandbox. Perhaps I should reserve a new sandbox and in that sandbox, we could try out new APIs. So I'm not really sure about the third part, but yeah, I definitely have an idea of finishing this up uh, in the future. So thanks for watching again. Make sure to subscribe for more content. You can follow my page on Instagram. It's SDNBit. Uh, please ask any questions if there's something you couldn't understand. Uh, I'm glad to help. Thank you for watching again and have a nice day.